Hello and welcome. India's top outsourcing companies are facing tough times now and ahead, but they're also trying to change and getting into areas where you wouldn't have quite imagined them to do earlier. Let's find out more from Keshav Murugesh, CEO of WNS Services. Keshav, thank you very much for joining us. Thank so you. I'm going to ask you about what the new thing you're doing, but before that, tell us about what thing, how things are looking in this post-Trump, post-Brexit world. So Govind, first of all, I must uh, give you a lot of comfort from a uh, WNS point of view, actually things have never been better. Right, so we've actually gone to the market with uh, almost 12% constant currency growth from a top line point of view. For the last two quarters, we've actually upped guidance both on the revenue side as well as profitability side. And I think a lot of it comes from, you know, the kind of things that we have done over the past few years. Some of which I've to told you about. I think our differentiation is really resonating extremely well in the marketplace. You know, driving top line, driving you know bottom line. Uh, really enabling us to invest much much more in some of the new kind of models and really helping us with our market cap. Uh, so that's where we are as far as the business today is concerned. Uh, but more importantly, it also has helped us drive and create a very, very strong pipeline of sales for growth, which is truly, you know, broad based across geographies, across verticals and across, you know, all our, you know, core offering areas. In terms of some of the, uh, you know, disturbances or some of the announcements and pronouncements. Let me just quickly tell you, I think this is a new normal. You know, I don't think we can be concerned or worried about all of this. We just have to bake all of these, you know, announcements into our business model and keep moving ahead. And WNS has been quite disciplined about it. You know, when Brexit happened, people said the world would end. Actually, we felt it would actually create new opportunity for us. For us. That has actually happened and we're seeing growth, we're seeing solid. Can you illustrate that? So we're, we're actually seeing, uh, you know, clients in the UK want to be become more competitive. Mm -hmm. We are actually seeing clients in the UK saying that, look, uh, you know, employee costs are likely to go up because, you know, uh, taxation rates in the UK will go up. Mm -hmm. it, it will actually, it plays into, you know, the outsourcing model. And finally, every country in the EU is now saying, I got to be competitive to compete with the other. So it's actually helping us beyond the UK into other but countries yeah, as well. That some seems to run sort of counterintuitive to the entire the, uh, exactly. the political yeah. side of thinking. Absolutely, absolutely. So I don't think people expected it to be in that fashion. But at least at WNS, we said we have to make it that way with our clients and we have actually delivered on that. So that is one. Uh, you know, when, when the new president came in in the Philippines, people were all extremely concerned about, you know, all, all the negative noise happening there. But the reality of life is, I think he's the first president, you know, from the Philippines who has actually created a very focused IT kind of drive, right? He's actually got a specific plan of taking the Philippines from dollar uh, X to dollar Y. And from that perspective, so while clients may have had... You're he's just, he's not only killing drugs. No, no, he's, he's, he's actually doing it with a plan, I guess, right? And again, that's actually played an extreme level from, from our, our perspective as How well. How big are you in Philippines? We are close to about 4,000 people now. Yeah, and we're growing rapidly, three, four uh, you know, offices. And, uh, and now, you know, there is a lot of this noise coming out of the, uh, out of the US. Mm -hmm. The reality is we don't really, uh, we're not concerned about H-1B visas at all. We don't leverage them. Mm -hmm. And uh, for us, North America is a growth market. Mm -hmm. So we've traditionally been, you know, UK focused. We've now got revenues down from 55 to 40% in the UK because we are growing the UK, but we're also growing North America and Asia Pac. So overall, I feel very good about where we are positioned. And in spite of all of this, I think we'll just bake it into our business models and keep moving ahead. Right. So you're saying if you are growing and you see opportunities, and you to use two, three examples, UK, Philippines, and the United States, it, this should in some ways apply to others as well. So Absolutely. I'm saying, I'm trying to see if this is a somewhat more optimistic situation than maybe yeah, some so, of us so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty certain that, you know, as you're interacting with the BPM uh, players, you will see that, you know, generally the feeling here is that the BPM players are quite insulated from some of yes. the turbulence yes. that, you yeah. know, people are talking about. Yeah. And, and the I think digital transformation, yeah. All of it, part, because yes. the reality is I think all of us as we have spoken multiple times we have actually incorporated some of these so-called turbulences or disturbances into our business models and driven our new you know age offerings with our clients you know incorporating these programs so whether it is social mobile analytics cloud or you know robotics process automation these are not things that scare us these are things that we have you know put into our you know, business model in order to make our people even more effective and far more efficient and frankly, it creates a far more sticky relationship with our clients because the biggest disruption that is happening really is on the client's end, mm. right? That is where the disruption yes. is happening. Yes. They have no, they are actually struggling in terms of understanding what's the new business models, what's going to happen around, you know, you know the, the new millennials, how they're going to spend. And, and, and so they're reaching out to us saying, you know, I hope you guys have fixed all of this on your side because we want your help to, you know, to stay profitable, to stay ahead of the curve and to stay competitive. And, and you're saying broadly some of these sort of geopolitical shifts that we are seeing 
will not affect the thinking there because you know no. because the, geo, the the political response to this is that doesn't matter because we just want to keep jobs here not or we at want to all send people at back. the most you know uh, what what will happen is ceos in some of these geographies mm -hmm. will just keep quieter mm -hmm. about you know some of their uh, programs mm -hmm. but actually i'm seeing acceleration in in many cases of you know of of decision making mm -hmm. and uh, from their perspective I'm very clear that finally, you know, while while all the political rhetoric is something we've always been sure, used sure. to, it mm -hmm. will die down and somewhere along the way, CEOs and management teams will need to make calls on how they want to become more efficient, how they want to deliver to the stakeholders. And this is such a strategic tool from their point of view, it cannot be ignored. Right. Okay, so now let's move on to what you've been trying to do to build your pipeline or the quality of your pipeline. So, one of the things you've done is actually partnered with NIIT to set up a course in an institute or in, in the NIIT uh, university. So tell us about what made you want to set up an MBA for analytics course and how does that feed into your larger supply of talent? So let me tell you that you know if you look at our revenue profile and compare us with say five, six years ago, I already spoke about how the geographic profile is changing, right? If you just look at even the mixed profile in terms of the quality of revenue, you'll see that almost 20% of our revenue now comes from higher end finance and uh, accounting. Uh, almost 19%, which is 13% standalone, 6% embedded comes from analytics now, right? And in many cases, we are actually starting domain-based engagement with clients with you know, one of these areas, you know, either uh, FNA, uh, research and analytics, or maybe even customer interaction services, which is no more the traditional contact center kind of area. So we've completely moved up the value chain, lots of interesting things happening here. And from our perspective, therefore, there is this need to constantly make sure that we have the right kind of people who are interacting with our clients, uh, you know, and, and really helping them with, you know, some of their challenges, particularly around data and data sciences and analytics. So one of the things that we did was we said, you know, let us go out and, and really create, co-create this course along with NIT University actually uh, and, and, and really make sure that the curriculum course uh, content was developed jointly by us but where we had a big influence. The case studies were developed by us which are customer case studies. Uh, we then went out and, you know, and asked for students who have who are math, engineering, you know, uh, quant kind of backgrounds, three years work experience. We had 5,000 applicants and we selected 47, wow. right? And we will have two batches a year, which will produce about 120. But the beauty of this model is one year they spend at the university on campus, one year they spend in WNS, you know, kind of projects, and at the end of which, when they pass out, they are absorbed completely in, into WNS. Similarly, what one of the things we're also doing is, so we'll have 120, you know, kind of data science uh, scientists coming into WNS, and so we're taking care of our own, you know, kind of need. Similarly, we are also looking at potentially doing something in a similar uh, vein uh, involving the whole area of you know, our design thinking, right? Because we actually see our business moving in that fashion. So, end of the day, I, I guess you know, we, are, we are working very closely with NASCOM and the industry bodies to ensure that the rank and file you know, are far better trained. From a BPM council point of view, I'm driving this whole program of creating an ecosystem for talent, which is industry ready. And individually within the company, there are a number of learning and development programs that are transforming you know, the, the input into WNS and also completely changing the talent that we have already in the company. So, how is the? What's your outlook for 2017 like? I mean, in, and I mean, one is the. This is the supply is something that will help you in the longer term. But are you seeing a continuation of growth the way you described it for the previous few quarters? Are you seeing any changes in the kind of growth? For instance, would it? Do you see any, see any shift in verticals? So, uh, so April is when we will actually give guidance for the next year. We are, we end uh, uh, in March. Uh, but like I said, you know, for the last two quarters, we've actually increased guidance and for fiscal 2017, the guidance is, around, uh, is around 12%. But I would expect, I, I see no reason why with, you know, all the uh, imp uh, positive impact I'm seeing around pipeline, around client visits, around just interest in some of the things that we're doing, you know, uh, this kind of growth, you know, uh, continuing to be there, one. And I think a lot of it will be driven around our core verticals, which is insurance, travel, healthcare. Uh, and uh, I think the quality of revenue will keep, be, you know, keep uh, changing because what is now driving a lot of our growth is high margin customer interaction services, mm. analytics, as well as uh, the, the, the area of finance and accounting. But the biggest differentiator that WNS brings to the table is the fact that we 
understand the client's business domain and that is what is resonating very well. So very confident about where 2018 will be. Right. So as, as, as you go to sleep every night and get up, so what are the one or two things that you are looking at to s understand what's happening? It could be positive, negative and you know something that gives you the pulse of the environment. See the only thing that I'm always uh, you know looking at is I don't really bother too much about you know uh, what is out of my control because I think we have a good you know I, uh, we have a good sense of whatever is in our control. But the one thing that I keep waiting on is to see that, you know, is there any signal of customer decision making flagging, mm -hmm. right? And that's the only area that I spend a lot of time on to look at. And, and frankly, at this point in time, I, I actually see it accelerating. Okay. That's a good note to end on. Thank you so much. Kishan. Thank you very Thank much. You.